Okay, so it's finally fall here in Ocala. And we all know what that means, don't we? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> really, nothing's changed. Fall is pretty much just summer 2.0 here in Ocala. It's still hot. It's still humid. Well, okay, to be perfectly fair, maybe a few things have changed. A little. Just a little. Because <laughs> now that I think about it, the days are still hot. But it's more of a miserable hot instead of a surface of the sun kind of hot. Daytime temperatures are mostly staying under 90 degrees now, which is almost pleasant. And it's still pretty humid out, but I don't have to change clothes every time I go outdoors, which is nice. <laughs> Mornings are getting pretty pleasant too. I mean, for a couple hours anyway. And it's actually starting to get a little bit cooler in the evenings too. We've already had some nights in the 70s. I nearly broke out the blankets. So for those of you from places a little bit farther north, let me tell you a little bit about what fall is really like here in Ocala. Well, first of all, the temperatures. Now, I've already touched on that a little bit, but I'm all about the details. In September, our average high temperature is around 90 degrees and our average low is about 70. In October, we're looking at an average high of about 84 and our lows get down to the low 60s. By November, it's a cool 72 during the day and a fire pit friendly 53 degrees at night. Of course, that's not written in stone. I can remember at least one October when we had our first freeze the very end of the month, the night before Halloween, actually. That was a shocker. <laughs> so no, we probably won't be pulling out the winter jackets for pumpkin season, but we do look forward to opening our windows again and letting in all the fresh fall air. Even if we can only do it after dark or when a cold front sweeps through for a couple days. Now fall also means no more mowing the lawn for a while. Well, okay, not in September. We still have to mow in September, just usually not as often. But by early October, the grass is mostly gone dormant, so we can pack away the lawn equipment. And we don't have to worry about getting out the snow shovels or the blowers either. Of course, we do get some falling leaves, but not those huge piles that I see on TV from more northern climbs. Although those two look like a lot of fun. Not the breaking up part, but the jumping in part? That part I could do. <laughs> and you won't see all those fantastic fall colors down here either. We do have a few trees that change color like sugar maple and sweet gum, but there's not enough of them in any one spot to really get that fall color experience. Most of our trees are of the more evergreen variety like cedar, pine, and live oak. Of course, live oaks aren't a true evergreen, but they do stay green all winter because they don't shed their leaves in fall. They drop their leaves in the spring when the new leaves come in. They just had to be different. So if we want to see the fall leaves changing color, we have to travel north, and a lot of us do. So while you're heading down here, we're heading up there. Which is why they say that the only thing that changes color in Florida in the fall is the license plates. Because that's the time of year when all those out-of-state tags start dotting the local landscape and bringing in all the color. Now rainy season starts winding down in fall too. Our rainy season starts in early June and usually lasts through late September, early October. So by fall, we're not having afternoon rain showers on a daily basis, which is nice. Just in time for fall barbecue season, too. Of course, barbecue season is pretty much year-round here. Just in the summer, we tend to cook outside and eat inside in the air conditioning. And away from the bugs. Fall is also the start of more outdoor activities, like autumn festivals and the first Friday art walk that goes on at the Ocala Square on the first Friday of every month. Every year, September through May, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., you can wander around downtown and just have a great time. Local artists have their works displayed for sale on Square, and there's live entertainment, and while you're out checking out the art, you can also take advantage of all the downtown shops and eateries that stay open for the event. It's a lot of fun. Fall is also when Shalom Park starts a lot of their extra activities, like the Park After Dark concert series, the Sunset Cinema, and the Harvest Festival that they put on every year. Another thing we here in Ocala look forward to every fall is the start of stone crab season, which runs from October 15th through May 1st. Now, if you've never had stone crab, well, let's just say you're in for a treat. They're kind of pricey, but they are worth every penny. And towards the very end of fall in November, that's when the manatees start heading back to the springs for the winter. 
Now, I admit, technically that's not in Ocala, but it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Crystal River from here to see him up close and personal. And since I am talking about what we do here in the fall, there's a whole lot of people that live here that still go to see the manatees at least once during the season every year. A lot of us go a whole lot more than once. Guilty. There are a couple of downers to fall here in Ocala, though. One is that fall is still hurricane season. Hurricane season runs from June 1st through November 30th. But like I've mentioned in a few previous videos, hurricanes are not really a big worry here in Ocala. We're pretty much in the middle of the state, and any storms that come from either the Atlantic or the Gulf have to cross a whole lot of dry land before they get here, which pretty much kills their mojo. <laughs> we might get a tropical storm or a lot of wind and rain, but it's not like those pictures and videos that we've all seen on the Weather Channel from places that get head on. I mean, yeah, you have to be prepared just in case, but we're in a pretty safe spot here weather-wise. And the other downside to fall in Ocala is love bugs. If you're fortunate enough not to know what a love bug is, count your blessings. A love bug is it's a little tiny black flying relative of the marsh fly. Now there's an old wives tale that the University of Florida developed them to eat mosquitoes in an experiment that went horribly wrong. But actually they migrated up from Central America and they made it to Florida sometime in the 1940s. They don't bite and they don't sting, but they are super annoying just the same. They start hatching out twice a year, once in May and once in September, and they stick around for several weeks. They only live three or four days, so two of them are usually stuck together trying to create the next generation while they can. Hence the name, love bugs. <laughs> they love temperatures over 84 degrees, and something about the smell of asphalt or oil vapors really seems to attract them. So you find yourself driving through clouds of them every time you drive anywhere. And the most annoying thing about driving through love bugs? Those dead little bodies absolutely eat paint. Seriously. Never let your car sit any longer than you have to after driving through love bugs. If you can't wash them off right away, at least rinse as much as you can off with water, because water neutralizes the acid or whatever it is. So you might say that love bug season is a good reason for having an all-you-can-wash pass at the local car wash. <laughs> now I've heard of people spraying the front of your car with cooking oil or even WD-40 to keep them from sticking, but honestly, I'm not sure that either one of those would be much better for your paint than the love bugs are. But what you can do is just keep the front of your car waxed really well. Because if you do, it won't take but a second to wash those puppies off and save your paint job. So all in all, maybe fall is a little bit different than summer. It's maybe not like fall up north, but pretty nice just the same. So wherever you call home, if you're heading into the fall season and hoping to find a more temperate spot to land before winter, Ocala might just be the place for you. And I'd be happy to help you find a new place to call home here. And if you already live here and want to sell your home and move somewhere else, even though I can't imagine why, well, I can help you with that too. Just get in touch and I'll get started.